Okay, we have two integrals on the spot. The first one is the integral 1 over 1 minus sine square x dx. And the second one is the integral of sine of 2x. You see, we have this additional sine of 2x on the top. And the denominator is still the same. So, which one do you guys think is actually easier? Well, maybe they are both equally hard. Anyway, please pause the video and think about them carefully. Okay, in my opinion, they are both pretty tricky. Well, I should say tricky, because we do have to use trick identities to help us out in these two questions. And let me just show you guys the first one right here, because it requires less calculus steps. You see, we have 1 over 1 minus sine square x. This right here, we actually recognize this as cosine square x, right? So I can write this down as the integral 1 over cosine square x dx. And you see, I didn't use any u substitution because there was nothing on the top that I can work with. So let me just write that as cosine square x on the denominator. And better yet, 1 over cosine, we know that secant. And here we have 1 over cosine square. So this is just the integral of secant square x dx. And now this is just a matter of knowing our derivative table really, really well. The derivative of what will give us secant square x? And the answer to that is tangent. So this is just tangent x. And we're done. Put plus c. That's it. No u sub required in this um, integral. Yeah. And now let's take a look at this one. Notice we have sine of 2x, but the input here is just an x. Well, we do know we have a double angle identity for sine. So let's use that first. So this right here is the same as integrating. On the top, let me write this down by the double angle identity. We get sine x times cosine x and the 2 in the front. And then this is over 1 minus sine squared x dx. And from here, in fact, you have two ways to approach this integral. And I will show you guys both ways. The first way is I can look at 1 minus sine square x as cosine square x, just like what we did earlier. So this is the same as the following. First, let me bring the 2 to the front, and then the integral, and then the top is still sine x times cosine x. And for the bottom, this is cosine square x. And don't forget to put on the dx. And from here, I can cancel the cosine x with one of them on the bottom. So this is just 2 integral sine x over cosine x dx. And you might notice this is just 2 times the integral of tangent x. And depends if you know the integral of tangent x or not. If not, right here we can just do a quick use up to take care of this. I will let u equal to cosine x so that I get du equal to negative sine x dx. And I can solve for dx by dividing this on both sides. dx equal du over negative sine x. And I will take this integral to the u world. I get 2 and the integral sine x still on the top, and then cosine x is our u. dx is du over negative sine x. So let's put that down right here. And the most exciting part right here is that sine x cancel each other out. So we are completely in the u world. However, notice that we do have this negative right here. Let me just bring that to the front. So we have negative 2. And this integral is the integral 1 over u in the u world. So let's put on the u. And we can just finish this right here. This is negative 2. And the integral of 1 over u in the u world is natural log absolute value of u, like this. And to get back to the x world, u is cosine x. So I will just have to plug back in, right? So I will just write this down. This is negative 2. ln absolute value cosine x. And this right here is it. If you would like, you can just box this. 
for the answer. Okay? Notice that though, there are a few other ways to write this just because of the trick identities and things like that. One of the ways is that you see we have negative 2 right here. That's in front of the natural log. So we can actually bring the negative 2 to the power right here. And I will show that real quick. So once again, if you look at negative 2 right here, I'm going to bring that to the top for the exponent. So this is actually the same as natural log, absolute value, and I will put down a parenthesis with cosine x inside, and raise this to the negative 2 power. And for this, this negative 2 power tells us to bring this cosine x down to the denominator and square that. So this is natural log, absolute value, 1 over cosine squared x. And in fact, when you bring the negative 2 to the top, you do get a square. So you didn't need the absolute value. You can just put down parentheses. And same thing right here. You could have just put down a parentheses because this is always positive now. And 1 over cosine square x is secant square x. So you can write this down as natural log. And I will write down secant square x with a parentheses. And we are done. And you put a plus c. So that's just another look of that same answer. Okay, so that was pretty much the first approach. And now let me show you guys the second approach, which happens right here. So you could have done a u sub right here, right away. You can let u equal to the denominator. So I will show you guys right here. I will put this down. Let u equal 1 minus sine squared x. In this case, though, Differentiating both sides, I get du equal, this negative stays, the derivative 1 is 0, so that was gone. But be sure you do the power rule first, bring the 2 to the front, so we have 2, and you maintain the sine x. So let me just write down this right here, sine x. But because of the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the sine x. So this right here, we multiply by cosine x. Once again, it was because this is the same as saying 1 minus sine x squared. So you brought the 2 to the front, and then you multiply by the derivative of the sine x. So that's how we get the cosine. And this is pretty much it, and we put down the dx right here. And I can divide this whole thing on both sides. You see that dx equals to du over all that negative 2 sine x cosine x and this is going to help us to cancel out the top so that's the beauty of this anyway i will write this down this is the integral 2 sine x cosine x over the whole thing was the u so i will put down the u right here and then the dx is all that du over negative 2 sine x, cosine x. And you see, 2 cancel, sine x cancel, cosine x cancel. <laughs> this is still in the u world, right? Completely in the u world, that's very nice. We have a negative though, so bring that to the front. And then this is the integral, and we have 1 over u, du. And this is negative, and this right here give us natural log, absolute value of u. And the u in our case is that. So you will have to write this down as negative ln absolute value of 1 minus sine square x. And if you look at this inside expression, yes, this is always positive, but we have 1 minus some positive number. And in fact, in fact, in fact, the maximum of this value is 1. So we have 1 minus at most 1. This right here can never be negative. So I can actually change that to a parenthesis. And you might be wondering, is this the same as these two? And the answer to that is yes, they are. But let me just put on plus C. If you want to stop right here, you can go ahead and do that. If you really want to see this is actually the same as this, you can bring the negative to the top. So you get this is like say negative 1. Right, negative 1. 
So I will write this down as ln parentheses, and then I will put this inside, which is 1 minus sine squared x raised to the negative 1 power by the log property, and then put a plus c. This tells us to bring this expression down. So we get ln parentheses with 1 over that in the denominator plus c. And look at what this is. <laughs> That's exactly this one. And of course, it's 1 over cosine square x, which is secant square x, right? So I will just write this down as ln parentheses of secant square x plus c. So either way, we'll end up with this answer. Whew. So yeah, <laughs> a lot of things going on right here. That one was much nicer. And that's it.